Good evening. Welcome to the December 10th meeting of the Yellow Springs Planning Commission. Uh, calling to calling the meeting to order, and would you call the roll, please? Yes. Noden. Here. McQueen. Here. Stiles. Here. Williams. Here. Donnell. Here. Also present is planner Denise Swinger and village solicitor Chris Connard. Okay. Uh, first uh, item on the agenda is to review the agenda, so I'll tell you what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, we're going to have a review of the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, then we'll have uh, communications. The letters are uh, in the packets that you picked up, and we'll review, review the communications. We'll have a council report. Uh, we'll have a period uh, for citizen comments for items that are not on the agenda for tonight. Then we'll have the uh, public hearing for a conditional use application for, by Jess Hallahan for uh, a home occupation permit to receive clients for medical massage therapy. And after that, then we'll move on to old business. And the old business uh, tonight is uh, the deliberation for the uh, PUD rezoning for the Home Inc. Uh, senior apartment housing. And after that, new business, agenda planning, and eventually adjournment, <laughs> if we make it eventually. that far. <laughs> so, uh, first item of business will be to uh, review the minutes of our November 12th, 2018 meeting, and we'll just do it page by page. So, does anybody have any corrections for page one? Page two? Page three? Page four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have a correction on uh, page ten. Page ten, number seven, um, should read Planning Commission agreed as a body that this criterion is met. Okay, so take out the not. Thank you. Any others on page 10? Okay. Page 11. Page 12. Page 13. Page 14. And 15. Um, Frank, okay. I um, should have uh, for page one. Okay. Um, you do not have me as absent, and you should probably have me that I recused myself. You have those that are present. But. Okay. Thank you. Got it. You get you get that. Yep. Okay. Uh, I move we approve the minutes. Uh, Monday, November 12, 2018. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And I'm abstaining. Opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. Uh, next <coughs> item is the uh, communications. We have uh, several letters that are part of the packet. There's a letter from uh, Susan Stiles regarding the uh, PUD uh, Home Inc. hearing. Uh, if you want to review the letter, it's a couple pages. It should, it's in their package, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in support of the uh, project and reviewing the uh, PUD uh, application process. Uh, letters from uh, Sue Pfeiffer also uh, supporting the uh, proposal. There's a letter from Suzanne Patterson in support of the proposal. And then there's also uh, an email uh, from uh, uh, written by Ted Dunnell, which uh, were you going to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yes, okay. I had um, it, I had responded to a citizen's email, um, and I really should not have done that uh, in retrospect. And so I asked that that email be put into the public record. I believe that's all the communications. 
fields or whatever we need. Okay. Um, all right, council report. Okay. Um, at the last council meeting, I think the uh, active transportation plan presentation was probably most applicable to planning commission, and I'm not sure if it's going to be presented to planning commission or at least I think planning commission members should get a copy of it because mm -hmm. um, that definitely fits into our bailiwick, I think. Um, there was some brief discussion about a $22,000 grant from the county, I think, for infrastructure and how that might be used. That might be also something, because there was a suggestion that it be a parking study on, is it Hilderon Park? Is that the? An engineering study for parking mm -hmm. on Hilderon Park, yes. Yeah, so that's something that could come to us. Um, affordable housing was, uh, line item was approved for the budget, and actually the first reading of the budget was approved. So I think those are the things that came to council that would have <coughs> po possibly some impact with the Planning Commission. Any questions about the council report? Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, now we'll move on to uh, the citizen comments. Uh, and again, these, uh, this uh, citizen comment period are for comments for items, any uh, comments anybody has about anything that's not currently on the agenda for tonight. So, any, okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the uh, first, or the public hearing, the conditional use application. I'll go ahead with that, right. yeah. Okay, um, Jessica Hollihan has um, applied for a conditional use uh, home occupation permit. She um, lives uh, at 127 and a half Glen Street. Um, this is uh, up on the screen. You can see there's a unit behind the, the primary dwelling on the front of Glen Street. Um, she um, is uh, typically a home occupation permit, uh, you know, is a... Uh, allowed um, to be approved by the zoning person uh, if there isn't any clients or any uh, signs or anything like that. Um, however, because this is going to have clients occasionally visiting um, the house, um, it does require this hearing. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, she's just going to have clients uh, by appointment only. Um, I have um, had uh, one inquiry. Um, asking f a little bit for more information, but no objections um, have come to me in the zoning office. Denise, I have a question. Mm -hmm. On there's the gray structure and the white structure. Mm -hmm. Which which is the is it the white? The white one. It, because it's actually on it goes across onto the other property. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe AJ could. He <laughs> Talk a little bit about that. Well, those, those lines are not accurate. Um, they're the just, red line. The, yeah, the, the parcel lines are just kind of imposed upon okay. the map. So there's going to be a little play back and forth, but I'm, I, I, I would say with about 99% certainty that, that it does not go across. Okay, because I just thought well, that's unusual. Right. Well, yeah. actually, in the old part of town, there are places where that happens. Yeah, there might be, but that's why we always ask people to survey their property. Survey your property. You know, or before. Get an easement, yeah. Don't go by that. Yeah. And actually, historically, I, I talked with the um, uh, owner of the property today, and that had been uh, used as for medical massage therapy in the past by a previous person. Jessica's here if you have any questions for her. Uh, we have to open a public hearing on this? Uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions from Planning Commission at this point? Comments? Okay. Uh, okay, well, uh, I'll open the public hearing on this conditional use application by Jess Hallahan. So, oh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to just uh, have added to the minutes that I am not participating in this process. The applicants are neighbors of my sister and brother-in-law, so I haven't reviewed, I haven't been asked to weigh in, and I'm not participating uh, okay. in the hearing at all. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to get up and talk about it a little bit? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Jessica Holohan. Um, I am opening up a massage therapy business, um, medical massage therapy uh, in the house on the first level of the home. Um, I, I really only anticipate um, probably less than 20 clients per month. Um, so. <laughs> so is this a new business or have you been doing it somewhere else? Um, it would be new. Uh, okay. We just recently moved in. Um, and I just recently graduated in August, so I'm a licensed massage therapist. I don't have any questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank thank you. you. Is there any other uh, public comments on this? Okay, in that case, I'll see none. I'll uh, close the public hearing. <laughs> I had a question for Denise. Denise, do you know offhand how many um, of the residences on Glen Street are really businesses? Um, <clears throat> I can, at the top of my head, I don't know how many exactly. Um, there's, uh, there is a that tattoo parlor that's there, and there's, uh, I think, a couple of Airbnbs that are operating on Glen Street. Morgan Family Foundation still there? Um, no. They moved. Yeah. They're over on High Street now. Yeah. Have any questions if it's ready? Okay. Um, should I read the staff recommendation? No, it's okay. okay. We set to vote on it. I'm going to move approval. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. okay. Um, moved and second that we approve the application. Uh, Call the roll on the motion, please. Williams. Yes. Donnell. Yes. Styles. Yes. Queen. Yes. Doden. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not too painful. <laughs> item on the agenda is the old business, the uh, uh, preliminary plan for the uh, PUD rezoning, uh, completion of the plan review, and ultimately recommendation uh, to council by the planning commission. Now, uh, at the last meeting, uh, we had uh, opened and had the public hearing already on, on the proposal. And we both, we've closed the public hearing, and for a variety of legal reasons, can't officially open the public hearing again. But what we've decided to do in order to allow for more input is uh, before we begin our deliberations, we're going to allow anybody who would like to speak for two minutes uh, uh, on some aspect of this program that maybe we haven't heard before or have some uh, comment or question about some aspect of the proposal that we haven't heard before and we'd like to speak. We'll do this for, you know, uh, two minutes per person, try to keep it at a maximum of about 10 minutes. Okay. So anybody who would like to speak, please uh, uh, come up to the microphone and introduce yourselves. And you're keeping time? Yep. Okay. Well, I want to say that I planned for three minutes, so. And your name? Judith Hempfling. So I'm going to speak quickly. In August, Village Council adopted this guideline, guiding document. It says the Yellow Springs Village government, of which you are a part, with community members, is committed to being a welcoming community. Uh, it says 
We understand that each villager contributes to the wholeness and health of the community and are particularly committed to those struggling to remain in Yellow Springs because of affordable ch affordability challenges. If there are aspects of the PUD which make it difficult for Planning Commission to adhere to this document, I believe you should include your recommend in your recommendations to Council the way the PUD and the Zoning Code needs to be changed to support rather than undermine village goals. The purpose of the PUD is to provide flexibility to developers who bring excellent proposals like this one in response to village needs and increased flexibility to village government. The characterization of this proposal as warehousing seniors was highly prejudicial and had nothing to do with the PUD. Many villagers found such a characterization unprofessional and insulting to those who have worked so hard for affordable senior housing. Claiming there is a sort of unwritten rule of 20% to justify voting against the height and density deviation is extremely problematical as well in my view. Uh, to apply a rule that the village did not bother to communicate to the developer who has now spent $40,000 on their plan. In fact, the original written rule was 25% deviation and it was removed to provide increased flexibility to Planning Commission to grant greater deviations in exchange for greater positive benefits. That the Planning Commission is a quasi-judicial body is not an excuse to apply PUD rules rig rigidly when they are meant to be applied flexibly to help meet community needs. And just as Judge Kavanaugh and the notorious RBG, Judge Ginsburg, look at the same Constitution and understand it very differently, we would, I would hope that Planning Commission's interpretation of these rules it would be grounded in current village goals established by village council in discourse with citizens to meet community needs. Thank, Thank you. you. And this uh, document that I'm referencing was approved by village council and was titled Yellow Bri Springs Housing Vision and Value Statement. And I've got copies here for Planning Commission and for anybody else that's interested. Okay. Thank you, Judith. Yes, please. I'm Richard Lapides, Limestone Street. Uh, I have a question. I understand that uh, educational buildings and churches and there may be other categories are exempt from some of the limitations that we impose on other structures because they're communal buildings, uh, public communal buildings. My question to this group would be, why would we not also consider the communal uh, habitation of our senior citizens of equal merit and equally deserving of some flexibility in the code for the very same reasons that churches and educational institutions are given some latitude historically? I don't believe we need to be necessarily stuck with those historical uh, processes, particularly if we consider ourselves a progressive community. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Anybody else? Four minutes left. Okay. Hello. My name is Linda Chernick, and I enclosed a letter, or rather I sent a letter that was enclosed with some of my concerns about this project um, that you've all read, and I'm not going to rehash that. But I do have a question. My house on West Herman is within feet of several um, rent subsidized houses that are occupied by Green County residents who move in and who move out. And I'm wondering who actually will be housed in this building. It hasn't been made at all clear to me from anything that I've read that priority is going to be, be made available to Yellow Springs residents. And I wonder, given the little that I know, admittedly, about federal funding, it just seems to me that the case has to be made that people will be drawn from as wide an area as possible. So whoever can really answer that question, I'm asking it. How will the decision be made? Who moves in there? 
and will this really be an opportunity for Yellow Springs residents to have priority to move into this building should it receive funding and of course the designation that you're working on right now and it come to pass. Thank you. Thank you. Miss, did she say she submitted a letter? And this is your last first, this is your last first meeting at 10. I'm Catherine Hitchcock and I um, don't really know the exact answer to, um, I believe it was Linda, uh, Linda's question. Uh, what I've been told is that as soon as, uh, um, if you make this recommendation or council votes uh, for the PUD, then as, as the process goes on, when the funds are actually received, then th that will go out, the, that notice will go out to Yellow Springs. And so those in the village would know it first and people like me would um, sign up. I would also say that I don't think there's any them here. There's no they here. I think people who would come from outside of the village might have gone to Antioch, might have friends here, might have grandchildren here, might have always wanted to live in Yellow Springs and have an opportunity to do that now that they're the right age and their income is at the right level. So I believe that could be the answer to her question. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. That's a bit of our time limit. You have 50 seconds if someone <coughs> wants to give Okay. All right. Okay, so we're going to move on to picking up a little bit where we left off last time, finishing a little bit of the business we had from last time, and then going through the process of considering all the criteria and ultimately making, deciding on uh, what, what recommendation we're going to make to uh, council about the proposal. So, uh, I know where we need to go. I can start. <clears throat> okay, so um, what I'd like to do is just review the qualifying conditions and the PUD requirements again. Um, in, in my staff report, I had said at the end that um, the qualifying conditions were, were uh, in general agreement, but there were a couple that we, they were split. So um, I want to just do a quick review of that, then come back to see if um, there can be conditions that could change that split in some way um, that would allow it to move forward. So let me, let me just first start off by um, reviewing um, this, the qualifying conditions. There were um, 11 qualifying conditions, um, recognizable benefit and size, um, both contain several subsections. And in order to qualify um, for PUD approval, each of these criteria um, needed to be or will be met by the PUD. Um, of 11 uh, qualifying conditions, all but um, H was not determined, so we need to talk about H a little bit, which was, had to do with traffic. Um, and B and G were uh, split on a vote. Um, and the, I want to come back to that at another point to see if maybe if we have some conditions put on this, that that might change that uh, vote from a two to two split. De Denise, can I ask a clarifying yeah. question? Mm -hmm. I only came up with nine qualifying conditions. And um, it's sort of hard to, because they're lettered, not numbered. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. There were nine. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There were nine. So A through I. Yeah. It was, I know, A, a and B had additional and ones. And that's why yeah, yeah. At, the, at the end of my report, I said, oh, they were in general agreement. But that was, you know, I was getting a little confused with some of the other stuff. Yeah. So, um, in B, uh, with as regards the size, and G had to do with architecture, which um, I had the sense that that mostly had to do with scale um, more than the style. Um, so I kind of wanted a review of that a little bit and see if there might be a condition that could be placed that could change that. I did make a recommendation about uh, a possibility of re 
reducing um, the height but allowing uh, a water feature with the uh, detention basin, ba basically making it a retention basin to uh, allow, would still get them in above the 25% as I calculated it. I mean, that could be a possibility. Or if you're okay with the height now after further review, um, but I think we should uh, at least deliberate that a bit. Anybody want to um, start with that? Not height. Well, was anybody in agreement that for the most part the architecture had more to do with the height, the scale of the building? Was that was where the maybe biggest the people that was? voted against it should say why well, their concerns I, were. I mean, I think the mass height in in total mass plus height, you know, it. For a project in that location serving the need that it serves, um, I think that that building is too large in scale to that location. Now that's a combination of height, area of surface area, of the elevation, you know, how, how big it is. I mean, it's too large in my mind. So this is just a question. Um, so taking out the fact that there's 54 units, it height I know is, is an issue, but as far as the scale, as far as the mass on that property, it's meeting all the setbacks, it's meeting the lot coverage, it is also um, uh, over the threshold for the 25 percent, they only need to have 15 percent open space, but they actually have over 25 percent for the density. So, and you, but you'd still feel that way that it would, if it was uh, a, of any other type of building other than the 54 unit, would you feel the same way? Just yeah, as in, in relationship to the harmony of the, is that in relationship to the harmony? of the surrounding area, is that where you're feeling that? I think that, I mean, my position has been that this particular location of property is in a residency. We are, I am in full agreement that it should be changed to a residency as part of the underlying PUD. <clears throat> and in another concession to increase the density on all levels, to increase that density another 20% on top of what we're giving them with the increased zoning change. And that, in my mind, on all scales, is what's driving my decision. I think that the project is too large for that particular location. And how you want to turn that, you know, we can go through is the height, you know, limit what we're looking at, I think it, in some respects, yes. I think a four-story building just seems too tall for that space. You yeah. know, I work very hard to keep buildings under the allowable limits. Um, not to say that 35 feet is something to be looked at for a well, lot of reasons. But the 20% figure that you mentioned, where does that come from? It's... <clears throat> I mean, it, it is, I don't think that there is a written standard regarding the, what, what BZA, in my 15 years on BZA, was allowing any applicant to come in and exceed. But, you know, and, and is it subjective? I suspect that it is. That, you know, we look at the zoning code, uh, we try to understand the intent of that code, um, in all applications and why it was created for the way it was created. It was created that way to maintain a small town character. That is, it, that has gone back as long as we've had a comprehensive plan and even before we had a zoning code, is to maintain small town character. Well, and, and part of the reason I ask is because, you know, if the language that we have 
it's back on thir page 13 of uh, <clears throat> the, PUD, the old PUD zoning code have the 25% rule, which in the next paragraph, it says in the new zoning code, this language was removed. Uh, then in italics, this is the one area zoning code where the language is broad in general because PUD is a negotiating process and the latitude is useful. If the language is made more specific, both planning commission and developer are more restricted in their uh, ability to negotiate variations on, you know, and so I, I just think it's, you know, that we used to have the 25%, but that was intentionally left out of the current PUD. So. Yeah, I mean, I have no So, problem. so you know, if, if you're applying the 20%, that's your aesthetic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe we could hear from AJ, who is the other, did you also? Right, I, I don't see the the building or the project as fitting harmoniously in that neighborhood. I think it's, is that? The, the mass is a very good term to use. It's much too large a mass for that neighborhood. Now, uh, I mean, an observation that I would have is, is the comparison to the hotel, which is, you know, slightly different part of town. Right. Uh, but it being so much closer to the street and, you know, I drive by it every morning on my way to work and I drive by it every day on my, on my way home. And when they were building it, and the first while after it was built, I found it really noticeable. It really stood out in part because of its mass. Okay. Uh, now it's part of the landscape. I don't notice it anymore. I notice, oh, they have nice Christmas decorations up and stuff. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I sort of suspect that, you know, my perceptions, you know, or that lots of people's perceptions of the mass of this building will change over time as well, that well, as it becomes part of the landscape. You know, and that what might initially appear to us as imposing, you know, when trees grow up around it and the sort of the landscape changes and evolves and, and people get used to it, I don't think people will notice it anymore. Especially considering how, you know, with the setbacks, how far it is off the streets. You know, again, by comparison to the hotel, which is sort of right, right up in front of you as you're driving by. And this building is two-thirds larger than the hotel in size. But it also has the varying heights, you know, the, the drop-offs on the end, you know, ranging from two stories, three stories. On two ends. Four yeah. stories in the middle. On two ends. Um, well, I will like to speak, and, and I don't think this is going to be an easy conversation, and I think it's also difficult to stick to one particular aspect, so I'm not going to. <laughs> First thing I would like to say is uh, I've heard a couple times that Planning Commission is not a political body and that we have to go by the rules, uh, the zoning rules or the a comprehensive plan or the uh, vision of Yellow Springs. Um, what I would like to say is that Planning Commission is a political body, just as the Supreme Court is a political body. And if it weren't the case, I don't think we would have had all this controversy over the uh, recent uh, nomination and approval of our most recent Supreme Court justice. Laws are written to be Hopefully, as laws and legislation are written to be fairly concise, but we have very varying interpretations of them, clearly. And as time changes, our interpretations change. So our, our uh, uh, comprehensive plan and the vision are both from 2010. The comprehensive plan references that there should be a housing needs assessment the following year. Housing needs assessment didn't happen until 2017. The housing needs assessment clearly, clearly stated that one of the most dire needs for this community is affordable senior rental housing. So that's what we're looking at here. Now this is the third project that has been attempted in maybe almost a decade. 
I was on Friends Care Board when Friends Care started to look at the bar property for senior housing and they finally dismissed it because it wasn't going to, uh, it was not cost effective and that was not affordable. That would have been just senior rental. Then later Home Inc. tried on the bar property and that failed. This is the third project and as planning commission has heard, there are criteria that have to be met for this project to be funded. So one, we know that this is needed. Two, I think it's pretty clear that the criteria that have to be met, you know, we live in the United States of America that does not value housing particularly, especially housing for moderate and lower income people. But we can't go to the Netherlands or wherever else they do, we're here. And so there's very little money and actually in this case the money that comes from tax credit housing most of it comes from businesses banks and for-profit businesses so this is the one this is basically the one chance we have and if this doesn't happen then talking about how it should be smaller or it shouldn't be as high or it should be in a different place that doesn't make any difference because it's not happening so if we want to say no we really don't want to house moderate and lower income seniors in rental, then okay. So that's where I'm coming from. And I think that uh, using the housing needs assessment and the vision that Judith uh, mentioned coming from, that has come out of the housing needs assessment that was approved by council makes sense to be looking at. Then I'd like to talk about this thing about small town appeal, small town feeling. At our last, count, uh, commission meeting that came up and I went home and I went like okay what does that mean so I googled it and I'm looking small town feeling small town appeal well then I was reading an article there's not that much there really because it's very subjective um, Ann Arbor to us Ann Arbor is sort of a big town but to Ann Arbor Ann Arbor is a small town so the mayor of Ann Arbor said you know it's not the size of the buildings it's the sense of community. It's the sense of community that is the small town feeling, not the size of the building. Will this, will this building help create a sense of community? I can tell you, yes it will, because the seniors who are now living either in their own house and can no longer afford to live there or are living in substandard uh, rentals, isolated from other, when, from their friends and hard for them to move around, they will have definitely an enhanced sense of community. Um, this building, the, the term harmonious, as I read it in our documents, was is the building harmonious within itself? And of course, does it fit with the, with the uh, other buildings around it? There was a lot of effort made by the developers to reach out to the neighbors to do what the neighbors most wanted within their constraints. So as I see the building, and it's not a four-story building, there's a portion that is four stories, but it steps down. It's, I, I think it's very hard to tell without a good 3D rendering what this building will look like, and that's unfortunate, I think. But um, as the building itself sits, I think it's harmonious within itself. It's with, it's really, it will be in residence C, which is also commercial. The fire station will be in front of it. It will bar the fire station from a fair amount of the neighbor. It's right beside Friends Care, very good relationship. Seniors who live in the building can go to Friends Care. Seniors can go and eat with Friends Care. So I think that there's a lot of good synergy there. Um, I am not concerned with the height of the building. I really appreciated the point that Richard made. This is a different building. Now, if we want to just stay a small town like we have been, we can surely do that. And I think most of us know what will happen. We will become, as we are becoming, whiter, more gentrified, and older. And those older people will clearly be upper class older people because they can afford to either stay in their own home probably. But um, so I support this project and I, I I'm done. Well, and, you know, just to follow up on yes. what you're well, uh, Lori and I, uh, my wife and I were talking uh, about 
not too long ago we visited in, uh, Niagara on the Lake, uh, went up to the Shaw Festival in, in Niagara on the Lake, and gorgeous little town, but everything that I don't want, that I would not want to see Yellow Springs become as a small town. Uh, because the only people that can afford to live in Niagara on the Lake, as, as you point out, are very wealthy older people. And, you know, uh, and, and I think the points you were making speak to the, 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 the political reality of, this, of, of the situation and of the decision we have to make, that I think this will help in a lot of ways maintain the small town feel of Yellow Springs by providing affordable housing for people who want to live here but are increasingly finding it more and more difficult to continue living here. So yeah, because I, you know, I think the small town definition, yeah, it gets... Well, I would like I to address a, a couple of the things. A, um, Personally, um, if if in fact it is implied that I look at the zoning code and interpret it politically, you're just wrong. I don't. Ted, I look I, at the book. Ted, I was not making any reference to you. You well, you said that it's a political body, and I have sat on BZA and I've I've participated in the rewrite of the zoning code to a great degree to try and, in fact, put the policies in place in the zoning code that are then becoming a statement of rules. And once they do, it's our job to try to follow those rules to the best of our ability to interpret those rules. And I think that I really try hard to do that. Because, frankly, I think that we do need an affordable senior housing complex. I really believe that in all my heart and soul. I think that we, in rewriting the zoning code, we anticipated this flood of seniors, affordable seniors, the need of that, along with a lot of other categories. And I think that we addressed mechanisms to make it more affordable for seniors to be in place in their neighborhoods and in their environments on a smaller scale and those are incredibly important mechanisms that we wrote into our code. They have yet to be taken advantage of because I don't think that a lot of folks really understand what those availabilities are. I don't think that we've had a good sale of all of the things that we can do in this community to accommodate those individual needs on an individual basis throughout the community in strong enough to the community. Where that dialogue comes from, I don't know. I would say it comes with leadership. So if, if in my mind, if leadership understood that in-place housing of seniors on an affordable level through our existing zoning code is an available tool, and that tool is starting to be taken advantage of, do we really need a facility of this size and scale, or can we accomplish the same goal using more current methods of taking care of seniors and housing and keeping them in place so that they can have a garden and a cat or a dog or have a roommate that makes more than 80% median income. Those things to me are very, very important. And so, yes, I think we do need a facility. I absolutely do. I just can't do the math to back it out of the housing needs assessment and eliminate all of these other possibilities and choices that folks could have if we really sell it up and justify a project of this scale. I just can't do it. I've tried, I've looked at it a million different ways and I keep coming back to that same point. And nothing that has been said has swayed that opinion simply because I can't come up with those numbers. So do I think we need a project there? Yes, I do. And I've stated how, how big I think that it should be. I guess I would just, I mean, I, we don't, I don't want us to get into a back and forth. I want to clarify. When I say that it's political, what I mean is even that there are varying interpretations of the same piece of legislation. 
And that's, as I said, that's why we're concerned about who is on the Supreme Court, because some Supreme Court just, and I'm not comparing us to the Supreme Court, but I think it's a very good example of saying even at that level, there are varying interpretations. And in regard to what can happen in this community, there, the kind of, yes, there will be some options for a senior to take their house, and if someone gives them some money, they can rearrange their house so that they can have someone live there. Yes, there are, there certainly are individual options, and this does not negate any individual options, but Many, many seniors do not have the capacity to continue to live in their own home, no matter how much money is thrown at them, if they could have find that money, because, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an example, and I'm, I'm not planning on, I'm not voting for this because I think I'm going to be living there, but I know within the next couple years, I will not be able to own my house. I will not have the income and the expertise to own my house. That means I have to rent. So there are a lot of seniors who, who are going to have to rent. And I think that if you're not a senior, you may, and you're not a senior and you don't have a nice retirement income, then you don't understand what it's like to have maybe lost your spouse, you've lost your income source, maybe you've had health issues, maybe you've had to take care of a family members, and your income has dropped. And we have many, many people, and there are people sitting in this room who are in this category. And owning your own home at some point is no longer an option. And so, uh, yeah, we will accommodate a few seniors, but for the most part, we won't if we don't do this. The, the uh, keeping in mind what the, the purpose of what planning commission is going to do in the context of council, <clears throat> all of these discussions are relevant to get into the record because they reflect the, what I'll call the full and fair deliberation of the applicant's request and that planning or the council can consider that. I, I think that when one looks at uh, page 14 of, uh, of staff's report that that doesn't make a suggestion it asks the question is that is there a middle ground that keeping in mind that uh, according to uh, the zoning code the recommendation piece that comes from planning is to approve disapprove or approve with modifications whether or not it is possible that the commission can agree on a potential modification given the impasse that currently exists on what I'll call density and size kind of blended together. We can collectively call that mass. And if there's no consensus that surrounds the staff recommend, not recommendation, but the staff question, then I think that you can fairly say that you've deliberated and then move on to the next point. What was the question on page 14? It's, it's the, it begins with because planning commission was in general agreement regarding the qualifying conditions, but are not in agreement on the PUD minimum requirements for height and size, planning commission could recommend the project with the condition that the size be three stories with a height equal to or less than Mills Park with its roof line. And then, I mean, you can read the paragraph, it's part of the record. But if that's, a middle ground that the body wants to consider it can and if not then it will I think that you can move on to the next point knowing that the council will know that you you deliberated it as a body and could not reach a consensus and I <clears throat> I did correct that say it was most of the qualifying conditions really what came down to was the uh, was the height mm -hmm. and the size I, I appreciate Denise that you made an effort, an effort to try to, to do this. And some middle ground. My sense from listening to what Ted says is that that wouldn't make a difference. Wouldn't make a difference because it would still be the same uh, volume. <clears throat> so I guess we move on. Should we move on to the next part of the, the report? Sure. Okay. Okay, um, there wasn't any uh, final determination on tr the traffic uh, part of that, um, but I did want to mention that 
Um, you did get in your report um, a traffic study through HOMEAKE, but that our public works director really wants to have his own traffic study done um, before the final plan hearing. So, I mean, if everybody's okay Parking. with that or for, well, for traffic. We're just doing traffic right now. Traffic. He's going to do a traffic study. Okay. Before the before that, it would move that to the final the plan. That was the one that we didn't cover at the last meeting. No, we didn't cover. It. Uh, it. Well, n not that either. That's in another yeah. section. Yeah. Okay. My so, issue with the traffic study, though, is that it needs to be in concert with the fire department, and the fact that they have emergency vehicles that are going in and out. Uh, if there is a traffic light, they need to sign off on that because of the way that they stage that. And, you know, if there is also a traffic study, I think that it is really worthwhile to consider uh, talking to green cats and seeing if they would accept a covered uh, permanent stop that would help um, all the seniors actually coming out of here to have a covered plate to catch the green cats or integrated into the you mean on Xenia the, Avenue yeah. yeah I had one question um, for um, st. Mary's on the traffic study if you could um, <clears throat> was that on the uh, was that number per hour in that four to that two hour range it said four to six p.m. but that the, those number of cars were per one hour in that two hour range yeah it was per hour it was per hour because that says peak hour oh I'm sorry yeah so there was a peak hours between 4 and 6 p.m. it was a per hour so it was however many cars that was for the if it was three hours it was that many 11 cars per three time hours time. I believe or, okay. so thank, one goodness, was like, thank goodness Emily is bailing me out here. well I'm sorry it was just confusing to me because it mentioned let's see where was it um, it's weekday peak hour 7 to 9 a.m. 11 total vehicles for the entire period okay. of seven two hours period. Period. Not, thank you because I was pretty sure but I needed to see it in writing there was some place I'm sorry I didn't have that, that I thought it kind of was a per hour thing but then I was confused by that so you're saying uh, that's a total right there were I think at the the last two lines in the box and that column Sunday peak hour of generator was 21 and you have to assume that that's that's an hour okay 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 that's where I think that's I think that's, that's where I was I getting that's where I was getting confused yeah. okay and this is this is public um, information um, based on that's that's they didn't go out and count cars right and this is just for that that facility yep. that's not yeah that's not incorporating in friends care saying that's just what is expected from that adult right, right. center okay right. So, okay thank you so if I could comment what I'm hearing on the traffic is that there's been a, this preliminary traffic study uh, Ted, you've made a recommendation that a more com thorough study be done that's done in concert with what may exist because of the fire station. But that's something that the Planning Commission would be comfortable moving on to more of the final development plan yes. with that information for Council. Yes. So, so in that sense, then the, the, the recommendation would be that this be addressed at the final development plan stage. Yes. And, you know, I, frankly, I don't think that there is a traffic issue. You know, I really don't. Um, however, if, if there is, if our engineer says he's concerned about that, he wants to look into the idea of a traffic signal. The traffic signal is what I worry about with regards to the fire department because it's got to be synced with their emergency 
as it goes out. You know, you can't have a light turning green when they're pulling out. You know, those kinds of things. One functionally, what you're really talking about is just to ensure the safety of the people who live there and, and use and drive and Correct. and the emergency equipment that's there. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that, I can't imagine that the engineer is going to come to the conclusion that a traffic signal makes any sense whatsoever to take care of the traffic of this particular development. But Okay. Any other questions or comments about the extent? Traffic flow? So we're good on traffic? I'm asking that, you're asking everybody that. Is everybody good on? Well, and you do that, have a request from Johnny Burns that a traffic study be conducted. So I'm, I'm hearing it twice. And so that I'm assuming that is a recommendation, a condition that you would impose yeah. for the final site plan. A, a traffic study is conducted by the village. The, the village contracts with or? Well, I think that if, yes, I think that if staff or the, the engineer thinks that there could be a problem, to do a traffic study is due diligence on our part. Um, if there is a big uh, influx of cars as a result of this, then, and there is an accident and we didn't do our due diligence, then we're in trouble. So, yeah, the question becomes, sure, if staff is recommending that that be done, the engineer is backing them up, it's you know, and t taking into consideration what you had mentioned before, one of the things that um, uh, Johnny Burns wants to do is actually talk to Bob Geyer with Greene County um, because of that being ODOT uh, Federal Highway, so um, a U.S. Highway 68. So that was already considered, and that's why he felt it would be better if, if it was the village that just did the traffic study, but he wants to also have an opportunity to talk to Mr. Geyer to get his recommendation on maybe who would do that. You know, the other thing that we did as a community is we shut down Dayton Street to truck traffic. So all of our truck traffic is in essence diverted down the state route, uh, which increases the danger of the state route yeah. by larger trucks. Um, you know, if we have a senior center, I think that it's prudent to probably get that considered. Does Johnny have a question? Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, it's a condition. So, so how do you want this to really, how do you want this recommendation to come out of the, the commission? Do you want it to be as part of the final site plan? The planning commission recommends the council uh, require that some type of traffic study be done to address any potential safety concerns? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Conducted through the Village of Yellow Springs. Well, just a traffic study. I mean, how that how that, that information gets managed and processed, I think that's going to be left to staff and everybody can figure that out because it's going to be part of the process. So that was everybody was in agreement with that? I think so, yeah. Okay, that was everyone. Okay, under the PUD requirements. Um, what, what page are we on now? Um, I have my own little You've got your own thing well, I'm doing. The, yeah. The well, I interrupted you, so where That's are you? Okay. I um, let's see. It's five. Uh, page five. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, there were eight sections to that. Um, hopefully, I counted that correctly. Um, are we on PUD requirements? Yes. Um, the Planning Commission was divided on a deviation to the maximum height, um, which is just really a repeat of these qualifying conditions, really. And also, uh, for parking, a decision was not made, and um, minutes did show that. Um, the uh, original uh, proposal that came in uh, from uh, Home Inc. St. Mary's was for 54 spaces. There was a request at um, the uh, working session to see uh, a reduction of that to 42, which they provided as well. Where is that, Denise, in, the, in your Page document? Six. Page 6 in the middle. Okay. Thanks. So, um, the requirement in the in the planning code is actually 68. So 
what we need to decide on is what is going to be the requirement. 42, 54, 68. Well, um, as I recall, the um, project team had suggested that if we, when I guess it came up, I don't, I guess maybe it was the pre hearing. Of in lowering the working, the working session. Space. At any rate, I think there was a suggestion made of of lowering the parking spaces with then the option of increasing them if they were needed, um, which I thought made sense because it could create more <coughs> green space, and then if they need more parking space, they add it. Oh, yeah, and yeah, they can add them <coughs> if they need to. Now, referring to. Eight or the eighth section of the supplement. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I agree. Yeah. I think the the lesser amount with options to add to fifty four is a good way to go. So forty two with an option up to fifty four is that what everybody's in agreement on? Yes. And so that, I think then that would mean that they have to demonstrate that they have a space that could be used to increase the parking if needed. All right, and also um, one of the, and I don't even remember where I saw that, and it didn't come up, and I do have a question about it. Um, there was somewhere in the report that mentioned a 50 year rain incident on the stormwater detention and from what i understand that usually and what green county will probably require is a 100 year rain incident so are we going to want to make that a condition of the stormwater detention because somewhere in that document and maybe rob the, the, uh it is engineered to a hundred year. Okay. Um, so the um, that brings us really back to um, the standards or review standards of what yeah because I mean we've got we're down to just two places where we're where there's not an agreement on which has to do with the height and the the size um, which is under architecture. Um, so the review standards of 125406. Page 12. Yes. Page, are you on? Page 12. 12. The staff report. Thank you. At the bottom. So. Um, and I don't know how you want to go through this. I mean, uh, when you, in the, in the BZA process, there's a set of standards that the Board of Zoning Appeals basically ask these questions and they, they vote on those individually. I don't know if we need to do that for this. A lot of this is a repeat, um, I, but I some of it does apply. Yeah, um, I would recommend that each and every one of these, you must meet all of the following general standards. Go through them one at a time. Yes. Okay. So, uh, shall we just go through them one at yeah. a time? Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> section 125406 review standard says, in considering the PUD request, the reviewing body must find that the proposed development meets all of the following general standards. And there are standards A through H. No, A through, yeah, A through H with some subpoints under a couple of them. So we'll start with A. 
the PUD will comply with the standards, conditions, and requirements of this chapter. And I will also say you can debate each one as you see fit. You can also simply have me call the roll on each of these. That is your I'd like to suggest decision. that we at least start with, I mean, like the first couple, I think we can just call the roll. When you get to G, they're like eight different things. So. Right. Is that agreeable to everybody that we just sort of start by calling the roll on? Um, I think that I would like to at least clarify um, what exactly the P. Okay, let's start with A real okay. quick, and that'll answer questions of the other ones. The PD will comply with the standards, conditions, and requirements of this chapter. Does that mean that the PD as Submitted by the applicant applies to the standards for the application, or do we think that the PUD will comply with the standards of the underlying zoning section? Does that make sense? I mean, there's. I, I, I think that when you, you have to read A in conjunction with B. And B, the PUD will promote the intent and purpose of this chapter. So I think that the B is broad in the sense is perhaps of affordable housing. So, for example, the philosophy. The philosophy, yeah. correct. And then I, th I read A as to mean the PUD will comply with the standards and conditions and requirements of the chapter, which really digs into the overall piece. When, when, the qualifying you, conditions the qual when and you, the when you weigh all of these the, the 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 puzzle pieces and put them all together, where do you come out in terms of your ultimate recommendation as an individual who votes? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions about the language of A or B at this point? Before we let's just. All the roll on A then. Uh, okay. And how are we responding? Yes, it will meet it or no. Uh, yes or no. It is a right. Yes or no. It does or does not comply. Okay. Williams. No. McQueen. Yes. Donnell. No. Doden. Yes. And hang on, just give me one second. Doden. Uh, okay. Ready for B? Gotcha. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments on B before we call the roll? So the PUD will promote the intent and purpose of this chapter. Please call the roll. McQueen. Yes. Dunnell. No. Williams? No. Doden? Yes. Okay. Okay, C. The proposed project will be compatible with adjacent uses of land, the natural environment, and the capacities of public services and facilities affected by the proposed project. Dunno. No. McQueen? Yes. Williams? No. Doden? Yes. Uh, D, the proposed project will be consistent with the public health, safety, and welfare needs of the village. Question. Uh, ready? Yep. Okay. Williams? Yes. Donnell? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Doden? Yes. E, Granting the PUD rezoning will result in a recognizable and substantial benefit to the ultimate users of the project and to the community, which would not otherwise be feasible or achievable under conventional zoning districts. McQueen. Yes. Dunno. No. Williams. No. Doden. Yes. F. The PUD will not result 
any significant increase in the need for public services and facilities and will not place a significant burden upon surrounding lands or the natural environment unless the resulting adverse effects are adequately provided for or mitigated by features of the PUD as approved. Okay, Williams. Yes. So yes, it will not. Yes, it will okay. not. Okay, Donnell. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Doden. Yes. On to G has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subparts. Uh, so G states the PUD will be consistent with the village's comprehensive plan and vision. Yellow Springs and Miami Township. Specifically, the following planning principles shall be adhered to as applicable. Number one, redevelopment in infill locations should be favored over greenfield development. Number two, natural features and resources should be preserved or at least conserved. Three, future development or redevelopment shall strengthen the physical character of the village. Four, quality design is emphasized for all uses to create an attractive, distinctive public and private realm. Five, places are created with an integrated mix of uses that contribute to the village's identity and vitality. Six, diverse housing choices are found throughout the village, including relatively high density and affordable units. Seven, parks, open space, and recreational areas are incorporated into future development. And eight, places are connected and accessible through the, uh, throughout the community by transportation methods other than automobiles. Do you need to vote on all eight, or do you just vote on G? No, I think that you vote on G. Just on G. And so yeah. that's if you need time Taking to turn into that consideration, over. Taking yes. Not all of these are going to apply. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So any questions anybody has about G or anything under G? So it's of the eight, if we deem that one is not, is it a no vote? It depends on if it applies to it, though, because there might, it says, you know, as applicable. I mean, there might be some that don't apply. For example, natural features and resources shall be preserved or at least conserved. There isn't any at that site. So that really doesn't apply. Is there a consensus on what each of the, what, what the commission thinks doesn't apply. Denise, do you have a, rec a, a staff recommendation, as it were, as to what of the eight would not apply? So we have two staff. This um, number does not six, apply. diverse housing choices are found throughout the village. That's the key. It's found throughout the village, including relatively high density and affordable units. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking that to mean that there's other housing options in, within the community. So I don't think that really applies. But that's just my opinion. Well, I, I, I read that differently. I read that as saying th that that is something that should occur. And then your thinking on that is, is that is a need being met uh, with number six? Or is it not being met with number six, not that it already occurs throughout the village? Well, I just want to make sure that it, it it's not, uh, you're not thinking that there's diverse housing choices within that PUD. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. Why I don't that think it applies. Is, that the goal is to have diverse housing choices throughout the village. Right. right. But yeah. Yeah. But. And does this meet that general goal? Yeah. That is. That's yeah. how I'm reading it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Other questions about any? Are there other ones that, that somebody else doesn't think applies or? Call the roll on Yeah, G. you ready? Yeah. Okay. So for G, PUD will be consistent with village's comprehensive plan and village and vision. Yellow Springs, Miami Township specifically following planning principles shall be adhered to as applicable. McQueen. Yes. Donnell? No. Williams? No. Doden? 
Yes. I guess I'd like I would like clarification from Donnell and Williams on Which what points uh, you think do not apply. If we if we can agree to remove what's what we deem not applicable if we would take these subsets the the two or three subsets we discussed did we make an agreement on that well i think we oh. took out two I two doesn't apply. doesn't apply doesn't apply and i think the consensus was that six the word diverse how diverse housing choices are found throughout the village is not does not mean within the PUD, but that's the goal of having diverse housing choices throughout the bill. Right. With five, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a mix of uses. It would be dedicated to affordable housing, in my opinion. Well, again, I think that means that in a particular location, this location includes. I take it as the project. Oh, okay. I don't take it as that. Okay. The places are created with an integrated mix of uses that contribute to the village's identity and vitality. I yeah, I see this as a dedicated use, not a mixed use. Okay. So to me, to me, I interpret that as okay. There's friends care. There's the fire station across the street. There are some green met housing, senior, or, I mean, single homes. So that's a mixed use area. Yeah, because this is a list of planning principles. It, 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 it is definitely con uh, subjective. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's uh, yeah. yeah, because if you, you go on. all of this into one. Yeah, because if you go on down to seven parks, open space, rec right. areas, it's, it's, and then places are connected and accessible. But that's a principle of the comprehensive plan and vision that we create parks. But it doesn't mean that every PUD has to create a park. You did, however, determine that that was not met. When you uh, read through your criteria earlier, it was determined that it was met. The open space no, and the rec areas. No, quality design. Um, the places are created with an integrated oh, mix. Oh, I'm sorry. It was determined that, no, this particular unit in and of itself is not, does not provide an integrated mix. I, I, I think it was what? looked at it's the It's not way an integrated mix right. within because the PUD. Right. Because yeah. it's all yeah. one type of thing. It seems as if five and six are meant to offset one another. Five addresses the unit itself, and six uh, asks, how does this fit within the overall plan in the village? And, and as an overall structure within the village, it contributes to diversity in providing something that is not otherwise provided. But for number five, in and of itself, it does not provide an integrated mix of uses. So what I would like is just for clarity and for when this goes to council for people who, who are saying no to some of these to say how they're interpreting them. Yeah. So what, that, what the no means. I mean, I, I, on five, I absolutely agree with what Judy just said, that in this particular development, I don't think that this is an integration of mixed uses. However, in the neighborhood, I think that it does. So That's so, the way I interpret it. But was five a no, one of your five no? Five was a no, and six was a yes. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other, yeah. which other ones did you have as no? Um, quality of the design is emphasized for all uses to create an attractive, distinctive public and private realm. Um, I said no to that simply because I think that there are design options on that lot that would be more attractive so those, and distinct. Were those your two no's then? Yes. Well, so and I had four is no and five, five is no. And five, five was no. And four was possibly no. Possibly no. So both. You, I had with, with both? if yes five, no. you know, if five were not there, then it would probably have been a yes. So those are the sticking point. Mm -hmm. Five. Topic. Five for me. Okay. So question: Do you want to go through each of those numbers and take a vote on them so that council knows where you fell? Would you, or would you rather reflect that when you? Craft your recommendation in. I think we know where we fell, right. because we said yes to everything, and they've said what they've said no to. So, well, I've got no's on 
Okay. Four and five. You said four and five, and then AJ, you said five and mm -hmm. maybe yeah. four? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. Five and maybe four. Yeah. Okay. For subsection. For but that was, that was it. Correct. Right. Okay. Number so that should be clear enough. Five, clear? number four. <sighs> There's still H. H. Okay. Are we H. set on we're set on G? Yes. Right. H. Everybody ready for H? The PUD will respect or enhance the established or planned character, use, and intensity of development within the area of the village where it is to be located. Williams. Yes. Danelle. No. McQueen. Yes. Doden. Yes. So you're ready to craft your recommendation to council? Yeah. Now, as, as I understand the language of the PUD <clears throat> is that basically we have to make one of three recommendations, either approve the PUD, disapprove the PUD, or approve the PUD with the language in there, I believe is with modifications. Well, and the, accurate? It's accurate, and this is where I have a moment that's going to have to go to the solicitor because okay. I read your review <laughs> standards that you must find that this meets all of the following general well, standards. And that was the question I was going to ask as well. And so I. That if, that if it doesn't meet all the things that we right. just went through, then we obviously can't approve. That's correct, because it, but but the recommendation will reflect where I, the commission did not reach agreement on those points, so that council is aware of that. Which of course they will because of the deliberations. As well had. as where we did reach agreement. Correct, correct. I think that that I think in fairness to the process, it's not as simple as saying approve, disapprove, and then modifications because that that implies there is approval of some kind. Right. Um, so uh, it, it's not a perfect process, but it's what we've got to work with. <laughs> might be one of the things that we might want to so, so I'm not sure look that you, at I'm not, I'm not sure that you can ever improve it, because there's no. always competing interests that exist when you, when you go through no, the just process. just in terms of the, the options yeah. language. So my sense is that we are not approving it, because it would be a two to two vote, that there would be a list of the things that we did agree Excuse on, please. Excuse a me. list of the things I we, could not hear right. what was going on. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I, I said my sense is that this is a no in terms of approval and that there will be a list of the plate areas that we did agree, a list of the areas we didn't agree, and the one change is the parking. That's that what Yes, I think that's fair. I think that, that the, the what I would call is that there would be a, a preamble to the recommendation that, it's, it, that indicates that the, ki the commission was unable to uh, reach uh, consensus on the application and therefore is required to disapprove the application in terms of its recommendation to council with the following information that you want them to know. I think that's the fairest way to do it. That makes sense. I, I would say so, although I, I would throw out, and I think it will be rejected, but I'm throwing it out nonetheless. If you thought there was a way to achieve consensus by applying conditions, you can do that and then achieve that consensus. If, if the notion is it's simply too far out of reach for some folks, and other folks are unwilling to move off of what I I exactly what's been submitted, that is not going to occur. But that also is an option. That's yeah. for you to decide. Uh, to me, it doesn't seem like we could reach consensus because um, I, don't, I would not vote for a 34 unit or whatever 
I, I don't want to vote for something that can't happen. That seems, <laughs> seems pointless to me. And so um, the other issue about the height thing is irrelevant if the <coughs> size thing is not doable. Well, my understanding is there's wiggle room. The requirement for funding is 44. The ask is 54. Yeah, that, I mean, and, and who, so who wants to submit an application that's not going to get funded, you know? I mean, they don't want to do that. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't speak for them. I'll well, you can I, ask a question on that <laughs> if you want to. I, we got the oh, okay, sure. would you want to submit an application for 44 units or whatever, 34 units? 44. No, it's a waste of time. No. Total waste of time. Um, I re understand everybody's perspective. I completely respect it, but I'm just, I'm, above board straight shooter person and but it needs to be 50 yeah, last year uh, it was in the it was in the 50s is, is what won and that's I, I, we we need to be at 54 to be very com to be competitive so well then I have a question I, of the of the 54 units um, other applications how many of those were in a village of our size they break them down between non-urban, which is the pool we're in, and the non-urban pool has both family and senior projects in it. Unlike, there's another pool called senior urban and, and senior, or I'm sorry, senior urban and family urban. There's in variations of that. But in the non-urban pool, there are, um, the reason for the 54 is to be as competitive as you can, and that's the maximum that we can fund. So there's two different, really, parameters, and it, it goes really hand in hand. So that's why we are looking at 54, and we really believe that that's, that's where we need to be. I, again, I understand all this input, and I, and I respect it, but that's kind of where we need to be in order to, to be successful. And I, I'm just being straight. <laughs> Is there an option in this? You just said families and seniors are two options. In the pool, but we would not be nearly competitive on a family size because we have to provide three bedroom uh, units and so forth. So in the, the building would have to become even larger, if you will, to, to have a, a family situation. And we don't believe that we believe that the most acute need in the village is, is senior affordable for the housing um, study. Um, so we wouldn't be able, under the same size building, let's, go, let's take that as a baseline, we would, have, we would have a lot fewer units, probably wouldn't even make the minimum that's re they're required to even apply. So just because of the, you know, the bedroom sizes that, that take the unit count down and the size per unit or, you know, square footage per unit up. So, okay, all right. Yeah, and so I think my tendency is to agree with what you said that, considering what we've heard about the, uh, number of units necessary in order to get the application put in that I probably wouldn't be able to vote for anything smaller either. So I, that might be an impasse that we're at on, on that issue. And because, I mean, that was certainly going to be my recommendation is that, you know, we as a body approve um, the condition that it, it dropped down to 34, 35 units. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I and and the reason that I think that is that I I would prefer to acknowledge that we acknowledge the need and you know it, the the sticking point is the size because oh you said but could we state that in the preamble? It state what part of that? No. Uh, um, that the, my recommendation basically that, the state, is, that we is, agree yeah. with, the, with the, the need and the idea yeah. for providing senior housing, yes. senior apartments, and that the sticking point is the, the size or scale. Yes. 
I yes. think that can be re I think that can be reflected in this the the recommendation piece of this or, or what I'll call the conclusions of the body the decision of the body um, what I would suggest is that uh, that we start with by saying the Planning Commission conducted a public hearing reviewed the PUD request and the preliminary development plan uh, based on the conformance with standards contained within the village zoning code and following uh, deliberations uh, was unable to reach consensus for purposes of approving the preliminary development plan. Um, Chris, we actually don't have to reach consensus, do well, we? Well, I mean, there well, has to be a majority. Well, that's true. That's, that's not true. Consensus. You're right. You're right. Was able to reach a majority. Yes, I think they were so fair. I, I think that would be better, more accurate. And then I think that, that you could not get a majority vote that in you, favor of. And that essentially, without getting into the, the the bottom line is the issue comes down to the number of units and the height of the building or the well, size, the size. Or the mass. mass yeah, because I thought I kind of I thought the number of units was less based if we went on that fixture unit, but it, that's why the size and the height were, were more of the sticking point. Or at least the height, and so. Get some put together. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, might you want to take a five-minute break and let Denise and Chris and I just kind of put something together for you to can build on and work with uh, when you come back from the break? That's fine. I have one more question though regarding this. Um, okay, so this I want to make I want to understand the process here. So so this recommendation goes to council. Let's assume that council is going to override this particular decision and vote yes. Then it comes back to us in final. Can we, there are certain things in the final review that have not necessarily been mm -hmm. discussed at this table. Do we start that process over again? That's why I would have been happier with your assigning more conditions in, in, in the possibility that this comes flying right back at you. That is, you know, with regard to potentially for height or with specifics regarding a traffic study or, I mean, it, it will come back to you and if they make significant modifications to your recommendation, it has to be resubmitted. So if you are aware that in all probability council is simply going to say okay but we have the latitude to step outside the zoning code and consider other p pieces and we're going to approve it but they still have to look at your or at the conditions that you've set to me knowing that I think if there's something critical that you see as this really needs to be here given that council will probably override our our no vote, you, you best well, put it there. Well, there's the traffic study. <laughs> Seems like the that. traffic study and the parking were Park. the two that. Yeah. Well, there's one. There's one also that was not. Um, it's the, the transition of ownership over time mm -hmm. was never established. Period. It was. It's. A, it's a fluxing. It's. It's going back and forth between Home Inc. and St. Mary. So they're not quite there yet from what I see mm. well I, I thought I heard that there was a minimum 15 years of, of operation by st. Mary's and up to 30 yeah mm. as of right now the we did further research um, the 15 years started the conversation started where that's the tax compliance period that is typically where the existing uh, funder is in the deal along with St. Mary. Now, the reason that we're the we're we're a community housing development organization, and we are operating under the rules of uh, capacity building by partnering with Yellow Springs Home Inc. and they've done an excellent they've done an excellent job of being our partner to date, and, and we're excited about working with them. Um, the home rules, which apply here, apply to funding. The, this is basically HUD rules, and that we that we can't control. The home rules are based on a 20-year uh, 
not a 15 year, a 20 year program. So I double checked with Ohio Housing Finance Agency and we are required to be the 100% general partner through 20 years. However, it oftentimes in our pre-development agreements or other agreements that we enter into, uh, and you know, the, we're transparent people and I know YSH is too, that this is the plan, you know, because we're, we're in it for the long run. You know, the, the, the 20 years, um, that's a time frame set by somebody else, but the 20 years is what, or the 30 years is really what we're under, under a restrictive covenant to keep these units affordable, which we, of course, we, our missions coincide together. We want to do that. You know, if we're going to do this, we want to keep it affordable. So the 20 years is a, is a kind of a, a, a checkpoint where we could either, we could either decide to keep the ownership the same, split the ownership in some fashion, or we could have Yellow Springs only come in and be the, you know, the, the general partner. It may de depend on funding. It may depend on other things at that point in time. But we can, we can work all that out. But we're going to be maybe not in, you know, in legal, legal terms, but we're going to be partners for a long time. That's our intent. The other thing is, I, and Emily, you, you may need to explain a little bit on the community housing for the community land trust. But uh, our funder has said that's okay. And so the land can be held, which is a very important piece of it, can be held by YSH. So if everybody says it's okay, it's okay with me, and it's okay with St. Mary, it, if, if that would establish a level of confidence in the, with the village as far as continuity and, and you know, intent, you know, we would, by all means, you know. We want to act as, I mean, I know this sounds, I don't want this to sound corny, but we want to act as your partner, and we want to act as partners together with you guys and, and, and providing the village with what we believe they need. And so we're, we, we pride ourselves on being creative uh, and just try to, you know, we, our goal is to, is to ha provide affordable housing and community and security for seniors who really need it. So, so then my question, <laughs> is, and, and where I keep going back to this when I'm looking at my notes is that in 30 years, let's just say that 30 years comes along, from a building's perspective, 30 years includes an awful lot of life cycle <coughs> cost. Mm -hmm. And my fear is that St. Mary's has backing, it has financial portfolio that Home Inc. is not gonna be able to carry like St. Mary's, especially when it comes to replacing roofs and windows and you know, I mean, the, you know how it goes. It's, it's a 30 year old building and life cycle issues concern me for the livelihood and survival of Home Inc. in a small community like ours. I want to understand how those, how we are secure in knowing that you're not just going to walk away, but you're going to help fund that transition so that we can support we, it. Yeah, I mean, if if we felt like the housing, you know, our mission statement is to uh, create affordable housing solutions, and that's not necessarily in year one. That's all the way along. I was just telling. Uh, you know, Marianne and Patty today when we were on our tour, that we still own our first low-income housing tax credit project from 1993. Uh, what, the way this works is, and it's, it's a very disciplined, uh, and it's a good question, Ted, is we set up reserves, operating reserves at the beginning, but we also fund replacement reserves every month. We don't do it just once a year, we do it every month. And then the syndicator, holds those funds and then we submit a request and say we want to do this, we want to replace so many appliances, we want to, you know, it's, it's now time to replace uh, or reseal the parking lot. So we take great pride in, and in, in you, you saw the building that was 19 years old, it didn't look 19 years old <laughs> at all. And so, thanks to this guy, but, <laughs> so we, we're an investor and so we want to make sure that we do two things. One is certainly we want to make sure that our own investment, it'd be crazy not, since that money is there, not to use it. But we also want to make sure that, uh, that our partners, the village in this case, would, would be satisfied with us. And if we, this business is a, is a tough business 
to get into. It's a, it's a tough entry. One of the reasons, one of the things we have that we can't duplicate is reputation. We want to make sure that you know we do the right thing. You know we that we that we have solid buildings. You know, we have 30-year shingles on these buildings. We we build these buildings probably a lot in a lot better uh, manner than uh, a lot of afford or uh, market rate housing. You know because we're one of the reasons is we're required to, but we we follow the standards. So the the reputation that we have is is if you ask virtually anybody that works with us, it's, it's a good one, and we intend to keep it that C way. Can you um, say the year that you started, who started this organization, and how many you how many units rental units you currently have or have built? Sure. Sure. So uh, next year will be our 30th year, and the syndicator that we use almost all the time, it'll be their 30th year too. And uh, so we... Uh, How we was have, it started? Who started it? Okay, uh, Dick McBride and, and Sister Rose Womanhouse. And they both worked up until their 80s, and they retired on uh, November 1st, 2013. And uh, so we are, you know, Tim Beat and I are, are following in their footsteps along with our wonderful staff. So uh, they, they laid out the groundwork, they laid out the example that we follow every day. And uh, the other component is the, the resident services component that, that really connects seniors to services and, and uh, really makes it a holistic approach to things. So how many is, okay. So, we have, we have, uh, counting the projects that have been awarded, not necessarily started yet, but awarded, we've been involved in 62 projects and 4,066 units. Now, we have partners in, all, in the vast majority of those, uh, so we, we work a lot with, with partners in order to expand our territory. We are in nine states. Our primary concentration where we have sole development projects, which is technically in this case, it's not really, but that's, you know, the general partnership determines that, is, is around here in Southwest Ohio, and mainly in Dayton. Can I add? Yeah. May I just add something from the report? So the, the report packet that we submitted, um, and I'm Emily Seibel from Yellow Springs Home Inc., for the record, um, it shows an ownership matrix and then there's a narrative that accompanying this it and it spells all of this out including the requirement for replacement and repair reserves and including um, operating reserves and then um, oftentimes what happens is sometimes um, the partnership will re-syndicate after 15 or 30 years um, and go in for additional funds if preservation funds are needed uh, and if not, then when the ownership is transferred and we're setting it up on the front end so that Home Inc. is going to have a meaningful involvement uh, throughout the life of this, um, then the replacement reserves transfer along with the property. I mean, that's okay. just standard. That's how it's done. Um, and then in addition, the land will remain in the community land trust in perpetuity, so there will be this local interest vested ongoing interest in the project as well as a collaboration on support service coordination. Can, can you explain the use of the term syndicate? No, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> in 12,000 words or less now. So at the end of the, the year 15 compliance period is a, is a watershed period because the, the limited partner, in this case Ohio Capital, would probably want to exit the deal under its existing terms and conditions which in this case, these are competitive tax credits. They're called 9% credits because they're worth more. It's a formula. That's all you need to remember. So at the end of 15 years, very likely what would happen is you, you certainly don't need to knock the building down and start over. So you would have, uh, you know, John, what would you say, 25,000 a unit, something like that. $25,000 a unit is usually a, a, a good rehab number, assuming that you're keeping up with your replacement reserve requirements all the way along. And so there's a, another tax credit program called 4% credits that is not <coughs> competitive, which is very important because they're readily available. Those are the private activity bonds that were saved in the omnibus bill earlier this year. By both, you know, it was, a, it was actually a bipartisan effort, which is kind of weird. And 
So those 4% credits would be married with um, probably re refinancing debt and, and potentially other, you know, potentially some home funds and some other funds to continue to not only just maintain the building, but to refurbish the building, you know, maybe new cabinets, new countertops, flooring, you know, maybe you wouldn't need a roof at that point, but, you know, maybe you redo the parking lot. Whatever was out there that, that had not been addressed just yet, it, that, that's the program, and you can continue to do that uh, over time. So that's, that's how we see it. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that that, I, it's very complicated. It is. And it involves a lot of different players, but I think it addresses yeah. your concern I, we'll about the... I had one other question. Yeah. Uh, if, if demographics change in 30 years, um, is there a mechanism to repurpose the building to, as, as long as it stays affordable, but repurpose the building for other more mixed age groups, families, those kinds of things? Yes, because the restrictive covenant that Ohio Housing Finance Agency would place on the building and the rent structure would expire, and then you could you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's some communities where there's, there's not a lot of programs for people that are between 60% and 120% of adjusted median income. Um, we have a property that's a, that's a uh, mostly HUD funded property where that could uh, eventually or potentially be converted to assisted living. I'm not saying this property, yeah. but there are different uses. And you're right, 30 years is a long time, but if you maintain the property, we already, I can't imagine this not being a strong location for a long time. You know, I, regardless of you know how you feel about the size or whatever, but it's going to be a very strong location. So, if we could, you know, if if you take care of your assets, if you, if you take care of business, and we're in a highly regulated business, and that's a good thing, because we have inspections from the housing agency, from our syndicator, we do inspections all the time. We make sure that this thing is running properly and the average occupancy of a senior development in the United States is about 96 to 97%. So the investors are satisfied with, and they've actually taken pretty low returns now that the tax rates have been cut to in order to stay in this business, which is, shows you that they really believe in it. Can I follow up on something you mentioned? I want to make sure I heard you correctly. Yeah. You said that this would remain affordable for 30 years. And my understanding was that this was to be permanently affordable. I can answer that. Yeah. So. Sure. So the state has placed an initial affordability period of 30 years. But part of the reason it's so significant that the land is remaining in trust is because once that 30-year commitment expires, our mission is to make sure that every project we do is permanently affordable. And so we would be working with, hopefully, St. Mary, um, you know, and looking at what the community needs, looking at the program, and either entering into another 30-year period uh, or not. I mean, what, whatever happens, we have made that commitment because that's who we are and what our mission is, structurally, legally. Um, that is our commitment. <clears throat> but your demographics could change. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And to Ted's point, I would recommend that it, um, I, would, I would look at certainly point towards the 30 years, but, you know, things could change dramatically. But, but I think, you know, the funding mechanisms could change. Well, tax credits may not even be available. There may be something else that's, you know, rent subsidies that were pretty significant, and you could pri attract private debt. And equity, it, it could be something like that. So, uh, but but the intent is there, and that's why I think that you know the long-term partnership between YSH and St. Mary is so important because uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna hold each other accountable like this, right? <laughs> and, and and do it right. Judy, does that? Okay. Did I give you guys long enough? <laughs> well, I, I'm about 25% uh, of the way there. <laughs> I need a Don't few more that. minutes. So do we want to take a recess? I, I would recommend that we take at least a five-minute recess while we craft something the commission can finally approve for purpose of council's review. We'll come back in five minutes or something. We're back.
recommendation. So, I think we've constructed the language. Yes, we, we took the break and, uh, and uh, Denise and Judy and I worked on crafting uh, some language that would be uh, approved by Planning Commission as the final statement of the results of Planning Commission's deliberations. Um, and this would be the, the, state, the proposed statement. The Planning Commission convened a public hearing reviewed the PUD application and the preliminary development plan based upon conformance or nonconformance with the standards set forth in the applicable sections of the Yellow Springs Zoning Code. Planning Commission supports the village's principles set forth in the Yellow Springs Housing, Vision, and Values Statement. Accordingly, Planning Commission makes the following recommendations to Village Council. The Planning Commission was unable to reach a concurrence of three members to approve the PUD preliminary development plan as presented. Planning Commission could not reach a majority vote on the qualifying conditions as related to 125402, qualifying conditions of the village zoning code, as it pertains to B, size, and G, architecture, or architectural specific to the scale of the proposed project in relationship to the neighborhood. Planning Commission by majority vote found the proposed development met the review standards set forth in 125406 as follows, subsection D, F, and H. The Planning Commission did not reach a majority vote on the review standards set forth in A, B, C, E, and G. For the foregoing reasons, the Planning Commission did not reach the necessary majority vote to recommend approval of the application to Council. Should Village Council approve the preliminary development plan and rezoning request, Planning Commission recommends the attached conditions. A traffic study coordinated by Village staff with consideration of the location of the firehouse and with potential input from the county engineer and Ohio Department of Transportation as needed. Two, approve parking with no fewer than 42 spaces, reserving space for possible expansion as needed to 54 spaces. Let me restate that. Yeah. Two, approve parking with no fewer than 42 spaces while reserving space for expansion as needed to 54 spaces. One that I remember, we um, we had talked about the um, utility upgrades uh, necessary for the project. I think that a condition should be that um, if the when the project moves forward, to determine. but other projects dropped in their priority to accommodate this particular phase. I don't know, what? talking generally, if the village, if Johnny or the village staff has a long range plan for what infrastructure improvements are going to be made over the course of the next, say, five years or so, in the budget, is there something that's going to get bumped as a result of this project, and what is that? I, I think that if if you that you can't um, attach that as a condition because if council says yes, we're approving this PUD to move forward, in effect they're saying, and therefore it trumps whatever else needs to happen because we're saying it it needs to move forward. And then at the final site plan review, um, I think that's where maybe if you were to able, to able to backdoor it and say something like final site plan review will show um, that the infrastructure can accommodate the PUD as it's being proposed. But I, I just don't know that you can back enough. that up and because council's going to... 
it, it seems to me that that utility piece would be addressed in the final yeah. development plan. Then fin final site plan will show that the developer will be responsible for all infrastructure costs on and off site, which I mean, you're going to have to word that one, but if that's the statement, that's the statement, and I would lock it in. But that, that's not what it said either. It seems to me that that will be addressed as a process. Of yeah, it's, it's, it's in there. I mean, it was simply every, um, the, it's the responsibility of uh, St. Mary's Development Corporation uh, for the aid to construction, for mm -hmm. the electric transformer, um, for the uh, water, and the sewer relining, which we determined was our responsibility. Homink said that if they have it in their budget, they would also um, offset the cost of that, which was projected at like $27,000. But everything else, I mean, we have already determined that it can go to, it's there and available. The capacity right. is there. Is that That's quite? Yeah. I think okay. Change your budget. Yeah. Are you happy? I am. Second. So no condition? No condition. Any other possible conditions that you want to address? I, I have. I, you know, I think you covered them. The, the owner matrix was on my list. That's covered. Um, I, I mean, that's all do I Do you have. want a, a clearer delineation for your final site plan? Are you okay with what's been submitted? Well, I'm making this is where you I'm, asked for that. Here's, here, I'm still confused. Hmm? And our recommendation is going to go to Village Council. And Village Council is going to say, yes, we, we basically trump everything that you guys did and throw it back at us. Mm -hmm. When it comes back to us, and it, what do we do with that? You know, do we say that all of the things that we've discussed are now off of the board because we've been trumped? If that's the case, then conditions for this particular project going to council become a whole lot more important. That's what I've been saying. Because, yes, that is exactly what will happen. I mean, that just really throws a wrench in the whole work to me because it's, I want to it, but when it comes back in the final, to me, you know, and when I look at it, if what they have to be specific in what they're, um, and council has to be specific in what they're deviating from, and as long as it is, it stays the exact same as what was presented. I mean, it can't, it can't deviate. I mean, what they presented to us is what has to be presented to council. Yes. Okay, so as long as in the final plan that doesn't change, then I don't, then, then only the, we should just make sure that we have the right conditions for that potential. And we don't have to worry about anything else because if it deviates, if the final ends up being very different at all, then they have to start all over. I guess, and, and I totally agree with that, what I'm, I guess if you were, if your head was at, can't see this being larger than 34 units, wouldn't look at it past 34 units and a certain kind of massing. If you know that it's going to come back and say, 54 units, four stories, done, then you might say, oof, I want a 500 year rainfall. I'm looking at a lot more impermeable surface. I'm looking, you might, I mean, that might change how you look at the condition that you might set. Other than that, there's I mean, I don't see a huge, really, you just, if you wrap your head around, this is what's going to come back. It will look like this. Are there conditions that I think have to be set if it's going to look just like that? Or, or cover that much surface? Or do, those are relevant conditions if you have that knowledge. And if you don't have those, you don't have those, but. According to the code, when if the final development plan, when it comes back to planning commission, uh, the review 
is to determine whether or not that final plan, and this is a quote, uh, substantially conforms mm -hmm. with the preliminary development plan. So it, it seems to me that the process, is the, is, as you all know, Ted, is designed to be that coordination between staff and the, and the developer and the applicant that they reach some type of appropriate consensus so that that standard could be met. Um, but this would be the time if there were some other condition that the body was, the commission was concerned with that you would want to inject something that I would say is, and I'm gonna use the word substantial here, but would be a significant condition, i.e. parking and that traffic study. So that the, the applicant would be put on notice should council concur with that piece that the commission gave them. Um, and you know, it's not for me to say whether or not you've gotten there or not. Certainly the record has, has been, I think, been thoroughly made on virtually every issue that I think could be made and um, keeping in mind that in addition to this recommendation coming from Planning Commission, I expect there's going to be a staff report that follows that along with the voluminous record for commission or for council to review. So then when, when it goes to council and they review it, are they going to review each section accordingly and have discussion? Or are they just going to put it up for a... I, what, my understanding of what, how council is determined to move forward is this is on the agenda for the meeting on the 17th. Um, to discuss only. No legislation is going to be presented until the January meeting uh, with a first reading if council set, determines to move on. So I, I think that there's the desire, as I understand it, from agenda planning is to make sure that there's enough time that council can fully vet this. And I'm sure that council members have been following these discussions in real time as well. And council does have to <clears throat> walk through 1254.06. So it's not just a, what do we think? They, they um, will review those questions. Standards. And they've already, they already received like the, the information from the uh, um, November 12th yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. And so they're being kept abreast of that. Um, I, the only um, <coughs> question I would have um, for planning commission as far as the condition goes um, because the um, engineering study, um, we, we don't really have the calculations yet for like stormwater. Is, is that detention basin going to be big enough? Is it, we don't have that information yet. I don't know if that means we have to then, that could be. No, I think that falls under staff review when it comes to final. That would be typical of any engineering study. <clears throat> So there you're could be. You're responsible to show compliance. So you're not going to see that as some um, too large of a con. I mean, that won't. That would be a reasonable condition. Then is what I'm saying, because he just mentioned, you know, parking is a substantial change or c condition. If we come back in the final review and we say, well, you got to do this or that, that that wouldn't be well. It wasn't in the original. But they would have to show, aren't they going to have to show that if it's a hundred year? Yeah, they're going to have to show that. So yeah, and they're just not at that point yet that. in the pre prelim. Well, the, but it'll happen yeah. by course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's on every project. I, right. I don't. Our engineer reviewing the engineering. Right. Will come up with that determination and sign off on it. I just want to make sure because since there is the, the, the reason for this not going through had to do with the mass and its size that we don't have to address that condition now and you're saying we don't. That doesn't really have that much to do with storm. I mean, well, mass. It's, it's, Footprint. No, does, but the, yeah, that's what I mean. It's, this, it's, it's the um, impervious surface, all of that. Yeah. Well, and I, mean, I guess you are planning commission, and if that structure is intended to remain there for 50 to 70 years, and we're experiencing global warming, warming, do you want a 100-year 
rainfall or do you want a 500 year rainfall? I mean, I think that that's the piece that, that's the piece that, um, has consequences for staff and infrastructure. That's the price that gets paid 15 years down the road when there is a 500 year ring. And then, so that's the only piece to me that you reflect in terms of that massing and size. Those pieces are within your purview. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think given where the site is, the amount of runoff, um, I'm not con particularly concerned about a hundred year being exceeding a hundred year and having it be a problem. I mean, it it could, in fact, if we get a hundred year rain, it's going to still have a problem down the street because of a lot of other reasons, not necessarily just this project. You know, I think my what I would like to say in all of this is that I I view my role on planning commission to look at this zoning code, particularly the rewritten zoning code, and see how these deviations to that code and the intent of that code meets with moving this project forward or another. And I use the underlying PUD as a threshold, and I know that when the PUD exceptions came in for negotiation, they were most all written around um, energy efficiency and lead requirements. Those aren't on the table for the negotiation. What we're negotiating is, in fact, the overall size of this deviation, and I can't get there. However, if council thinks that, then they come back and they think that the policies for the village are of a greater good, great, then it comes back to planning commission, and I'm all on board, right? So now, as a planning commission member, I want to make sure that what we're reviewing isn't just a sign-off on something, but in fact, we have all of our little eyes dotted and our T's crossed, and we've done due diligence on behalf of the citizens of the community. And that's why we're going through this process. And I want to make sure that that same thoughtful character is applied to the zoning code, which I really respect and I don't want to be demeaned in this process and thrown out for this for a cause because of funding which is in essence what this gets down to it's a funding source and i don't want a funding source to come back to plan the commission as well somebody else did it i want to have on the record that this is a one-time shot we're letting it go through and you know we're not going to consider that again because it will come up it will come up so that's that's my job so I think that the system works, and I think that, you know, certainly the need is great in the community. And, you know, if council thinks that this project doesn't have any impact on the neighborhoods and those things, okay, fine. It's just an opinion based on that, and so be it. And that's where I stand. I, I don't know that we can, uh, I, I'd like to recommend that council actually watch the video of this meeting this particular meeting i think that that would be helpful to them in hearing the different viewpoints well the other reason that it's important is because if we don't do our job on planning commission by maybe a, a, a person or two saying no and council let's say we just went through because we think it's a great thing and council came, did the same thing they just said well this is a great thing we need it and we got to do it that's a referendum. So do you <laughs> agree that it would, that we, to recommend that council watch the, this video? Um, well, I, I don't recommend the council does any due diligence. I think it's a responsibility to do that. You know, I mean, it's, I is, well, you want to go there, I think they ought to, to watch the tape of every single planning commission meeting. Yeah, well, that's probably not going to happen. But are, <laughs> is anyone opposed to us recommending that council members watch the video for this meeting? I think it was their motion, and then we'll. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. no, it's, all it is is a recommendation. I move that we recommend that council members watch the video of this meeting. Now, do you want to add that hmm? to the recommendations? Yeah. Or is it? Well, and that, the that's not meeting. a condition. It's, it, it's all it is is a recommendation. I mean, and they can choose to accept that or not. I mean, I think if they if 
planning commission thinks it's important so enough to put in their statement to council, the then I think that they can. Second that. Well, I think do we even do we? But if you just agree that you want to do it, then yeah, then we can just add it on as a. Okay, so we don't need to vote it. Yeah, no, I don't, agree think, we, I don't okay. think we need to vote okay. on. Manifest some assent of agreement. Right. <laughs> and it'll be is that agreeable with everybody to add that on. <laughs> so okay, add that on. And I have I have another recommendation as I was going back through this. Um, I suggest that in your recommendation that you we include an affirmative statement as it pertains to 1254.02 qualifying conditions. Um, what you've approved reflected that there was no uh, concurring vote for B size and F pedestrian accommodation, but the remaining qualifying conditions, you did agree that those conditions had, had been met by the three votes. What because page? you got on which one? so twelve fifty four two. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so twelve fifty four two. So this is how yes. it would read. Uh, planning commission by majority vote found the preliminary development plan met the qualifying conditions set forth in twelve fifty four o two, a, c, d, e, g, f, h, f two. Oh, pardon me. F. I'm sorry. F. H I not G not not G not G right all the other ones except yes. B and G I think yes. that's a good idea mm -hmm. okay yeah right. everybody keep where we are on that okay yes okay Just, uh, yes okay. yeah I think that's good okay. language to add in. Oh. so you have no further no further conditions. I mean, I, the way that to handle your um, recommendation is that it's not required for their review purposes by the zoning code. So when I'm sending that information out to council, I'll say planning commission took a vote and recommended that council do this, but it will not, it, it's not required of them. And I'll tell them it's not required of them, but everybody except one person is here. So. Or was here or what's well, so. not required of them it's not required that they watch the video no oh, a recommendation is a recommendation it doesn't that's what's not required Emily really okay so we we we, we I think we you've approved the language for the recommendation that, that you want to go to council yes we have the two conditions that Planning Commission recommends should Council determine that they want to approve the preliminary development plan or rezoning. Is there anything else on this subject that the Planning Commission wants to address before you consider the matter closed? I'm good. So I'd like a vote on the recommendation because you, these will be right. only draft minutes when they go to Council, so the recommendations got to be voted on and approved. Yeah, so I move we can... that we approve the recommendation as read and changed, whatever changes were made that Chris read. Second. Williams. Aye. Donnell. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Doden. Yes. Okay, so the next part. Are we done? No, 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 no,
council has been reviewing, right? The trans the active transportation yeah, plan I was gonna say that. is absolutely critical active that transportation planning plan? commission give a report. And I think that it's our legal duty to do that. So um, let's we'll put that on but who gets the future report? Not planning commission, they get the report, you mean. To do a report on the active transportation plan. Well, Okay, <laughs> so we have this comprehensive land use plan that just seems to be dead right now, and I feel like we got to get that back on track. With the amount of work that's happening right now in my office, it, it's imperative that we start either meeting more than once a month in order to get all this stuff done. I, I don't know what the priority is, and I, I mean, I, there is an active transportation plan that's in the process. I definitely think it needs to be incorporated in the comp plan too, as well. But if that's going to be a separate report, I don't know. I just need some How about direction. If we have a goal setting session at the beginning of the year, and we that's a great idea. Prioritize. Yeah, because I, I just we don't know. I, well, forward. Is it, is it possible that a planning commission member can get on the active transportation plan committee? Because that that I mean, before when you had a bicycle enhancement committee, you had a member of planning commission who sat on that committee and reported back in, and then if there was some disparity, you had a disagreement, it got conveyed back through that member so that you weren't in, an, and it almost seems like it could put you in an adversarial position if you say, whoa, whoa, that's not what we're recommending. So if you've got a person seated there, your voice is, is at the table, and I, I think that was certainly contemplated. With well, I actually was asked to sit on it. Uh, the problem I have is that it's um, a meeting that convenes during the day. You know, and I, I have to make a living. Um, so it was very difficult for me to get to the vast majority of the meeting. Um, as far as the plan goes, I think it's a fantastic plan, right? I think that there are things within the plan that have a direct impact on the stuff that's coming down the pike, uh, particularly when it comes to the utilities, uh, the phasing of the utilities, the condition of the utilities, what projects get put where, you know, in my mind, that's a planning commission duty to look at. And we've not been engaged in that process, but with all of this stuff happening, it's beyond me that we don't do our job on that in that respect, because that should be a burden we're taking off of village council, uh, because that's what we do as a body. And so I'm, I'm, fearful that if we don't do that, you know, if we don't start just automatically taking some things that council looking at and throw them on our table and say, well, now wait, this might impact our comprehensive plan or looking at glass farm or whatever, um, the bicycle enhancement stuff that, that could be coming. There's, there's just all these things that we well, should be the threat. What about the idea of having a goal setting meeting early in uh, the year to talk about these all these different things and you know consider possibilities like meeting more than once a month yeah et cetera, I think et cetera, that in order to accommodate. I think it makes a lot of sense so maybe we should start with that goal setting meeting okay yeah and in terms of timing then neither of you I guess can well neither, you guys can't meet during the day basically well, it depends week. on the day. I uh, can't a week. Well, there's there's going to become another issue for me. I've got a couple projects coming that I'm going to have to recuse myself. Um, they're large projects, and so you know I'm questioning, frankly, whether or not I had to step down, and I don't know where we are with replacing members at this point. Well, we we're in a re in the process of interviewing two people. So those seats right. could be filled soon? Um, yeah. Okay. So we're going to shoot for a goal setting meeting early in January? Well, early, I don't know if early. Well, early. In January. <laughs> yeah. Probably January. Mid I mean, okay. technically we could do the 28th, I guess. Oh, don't even go there. Oh, We're really? trying to figure out counsel. Just so oh, okay. All right. 
All right, well, we can discuss it, I guess, on January 14th, maybe. No, but couldn't we send out a thing and have our first meeting be goal setting instead of a... Denise has got a massive... No. no. Oh, okay. I have, a, I have but, at least But we could three, still send five. out a message to find out when we could set the date. Yeah, that's yes. true. Okay. okay. Let's do that. Anything else agenda planning? That gets us to adjournment. Huh, about that? I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 All aye. opposed. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. 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 Yeah.